One Riddle, One Answer by Lauren Thompson, illustrated by Linda Wingerter. Long ago in Persia, there lived a powerful sultan. He had many sons, but only one daughter named Aziza. He wished for her a wise and happy life. The finest tutors in the land were brought to the palace, and Aziza learned all there was to know. But her favorite subject was numbers, and her favorite game was riddles. The time came for Aziza to marry. The sultan began to seek a suitable husband for her. Who in the land is most worthy of her hand? The sultan asked his advisers. My eldest son is very handsome, your honor, said one advisor. My youngest son is very clever, said another. It seems that all of the sultan's advisers had only their own sons to recommend. The sultan was angry. You have advised enough, cried the sultan and he sent his advisors away. Then Aziza went to the sultan. Father, she said, perhaps there is a better way to choose whom I could marry. The sultan knew his daughter was wise and good, and above all he wished her to be happy. Tell me your plan, he said. Let me pose a riddle, said Aziza. The riddle has but one true answer. Whoever can answer the riddle will be the one I would be happiest to marry. A riddle? asked the sultan. Yes, said Aziza. Here it is. Placed above, it makes greater things small. Placed beside, it makes small things greater. In matters that count, it always comes first. Where others increase, it keeps all things the same. What is it? The sultan thought for a moment, and then he sighed. This riddle is too difficult even for me. In all the land, there is no man who could solve this riddle. Perhaps there will be one, Aziza said, and one is all that is needed. So the sultan agreed to Aziza's plan. The next day, Aziza set out with a caravan in search of the one who could solve the riddle. In every city, town, and village, a messenger spread the news of the sultan's daughter's riddle. One riddle, one answer, let any number try, cried the messenger. Only one will win the hand of the sultan's daughter. Every place they stopped, men young and old tried to solve the riddle, but no one had the answer. In one village, a scholar came before Aziza to announce his answer. He was an astronomer who studied the movements of the sun, moon, and stars. I have observed that the answer is the sun, he said with much confidence, for the riddle speaks of shadows. When the sun is high above us, even the greatest man seems small, as he only has a small shadow. Thus the answer is the sun. A learned answer indeed, said Aziza, but that is not the right answer to the riddle. In another town, a soldier came before Aziza with his answer. A sword, he cried, displaying his gleaming saber. The answer must be a sword, for the riddle speaks of war, and in war even the smallest man is great with the strength of the sword by his side. You have given a strong answer, said Aziza, but that is not the right answer to the riddle. In another city, a merchant came before Aziza. Honored lady, he said sweetly, your clever riddle has been solved. The riddle speaks of the ways of the world, and the answer, therefore, is money. For, as everyone knows in all matters that count, money always comes first. He smiled at Aziza, sure that he had won her hand. Your answer is more clever than my riddle, said Aziza wearily, but your clever answer is wrong. May I try another riddle? asked the merchant. No, Aziza said. One riddle, one answer. Aziza felt discouraged. Perhaps her father was right. Perhaps no one in the land would know the answer to the riddle. She ordered the caravan to return to her father's palace. 